Everybody says, Amen. 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 It's good to be back in the house of the Lord. It's good to be back with our family. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. It's just good to be back. Yes, it is. Amen. You, you just get this bond with each other and your family. And you know what? Nothing can break that. If we don't let it, nothing can break that. Bond. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. You just develop a, a fresh love for each other. Oh, yes. And that's wonderful. Love my pastor. Oh, yes. Love them so good. Amen. They're such a blessing to us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to honor the Lord and worship Him in our tithes and in our offerings today. Thank you, and uh, if you're giving your tithes and make it out check, just make it out to New Beginnings, and we've got offering envelopes for you. Um, and just like for you to, um, as God lays it on your heart, if you're giving an offering, just designate that to our pastor today. I'm telling you, the servants are truly worthy of their hire. They're truly worthy of their hire. I appreciate his faithfulness. And I know God honors him because he really is real. He's real. There's no makeup to him. And, and you sense that when you, you sit under the word as he brings that word. So, you know, you just give honor for honor's due. Amen. We just do that. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Okay. Joe, you want to place the tithe in the office? Father, we bless you in this house today. Yes, Lord. Truly, there's none like my father. That's, that's right. right. Amen. That's right. I honor you, Lord. How oh, this is within me today. Bless you, Jesus. I ask you to bless these ties in these offices. Yes. As we lift them up to you today. Yes. Thank you, Father. We thank you, Father God, that nothing's too hard. Nothing's Amen. impossible Amen. for you. And I ask you, Father God, yes. to take them. And, and Father God, multiply them. And multiply yes. these people's. Uh, finances, yes. Yes. even the things that's in their hearts today, Father God, I'm asking you be the God to turn around today and turn it around. Amen. In the name of Jesus, <coughs> Lord, we honor you. We bless you that even yes. in the time of famine, Isaac sold and reaped a hundredfold. Yes. And Father God, I'm believing for these people to be a hundredfold <coughs> in the name of Jesus. We bless you. We honor you today, Father, because there's none like our Father today. Amen. You sit upon the throne of my heart today. And I say, I love you today, Father. Yes. Yes. With all that's within me. Yes. Amen. 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 Come on, Pastor. We're ready for it. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. <coughs> Praise your holy name, Lord, this morning, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank Glory you, Jesus. to God. Amen. <coughs> Thank you, Lord, for your sweet spirit, Jesus. Yes. Amen. They can hear you. Yes. Hallelujah. Yeah. Thank you for your sweet spirit, Lord, for your love, for your mercy, and your power. Lord, I love your presence. Oh, yes, Lord Jesus. There's none like your Father. Thank you for your anointing. Oh, yes. Thank you, Father God. Thank you for your friendship. Yes, mercy, and grace, Father God. You've never left me. You've never forsook me. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You're wonderful, Lord. You're great. You're merciful, Lord Jesus. You're compassionate, Lord. Yes. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for the love and compassion, Lord. Lord, we Lord, pray. Praise your holy name, Jesus. Everybody get in a mindset of prayer. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Lord, we love you today. I, I sense the oh, Holy Jesus. Ghost leading this way very, very strong. Yes, Lord, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Lord, we pray for this nation. Yes, Lord Thank you, Father. A bunch of little rednecks from Kentucky. Yes. The whole church world oh, Jesus. is saying you're going to judge us. Jesus. But Lord, I see that you love the nation of Israel because they are your people. But you love the United States of America because she first loved you. Yes, amen. We've got generations before us, Lord, that have sown good seeds and harvest has not yet came. Well, Lord, New Beginnings Church is here. You would not destroy a nation if there was ten righteous in it. 
Here we are, Lord. Forgive us as a nation. Not just for killing babies, but Lord, we need cleanse of that. Yes, we do. But forgive us as a church for growing cold. Forgive us for taking your word out of our schools and out of our homes. Yes. Thank you. Oh, Jesus. Oh, it's time for America to get born again. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Lord, I pray for Hillary Clinton. Yes. Yes. And if you are a member of my church and you bash her, I command you at this moment to stop. Yes. Yes. You, there's a gifting in her, Lord. Yes. And a call. Oh, yes. Make her heart tender to you, yes. Lord. Yes. 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 I don't want to see her politics, but I want to see what you put in her. Yes. 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 We call that gift forth. Yes. In the name of Jesus. Hillary Clinton. In the name of Jesus. Going to do some things for Jesus. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Lord, we pray for President Trump. Yes, yes. Thank you, Father. <clears throat> Give him wisdom. Oh, yes, Father God. The division in our nation, Lord. Yes. Heal it. Yes. The division in our churches, Lord. Yes. Heal it, Lord. Create in us a new heart. Yes. Not only give him wisdom, but give him strength. All the bad words that are spoken against our government and against our nation, yes. you fall to the ground dead. Yes. In the name of Jesus. Thank you. Yes, Lord. We pray for President, Vice President Pence. Yes. 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 Give him little whispers from the Spirit. Thank you, Lord. To speak in our president's ears. Yes, Lord. Words of wisdom, words Absolutely. of knowledge. Let the gifts rise up in him. Absolutely. Also for Hillary's help. Yes. Yes. For with the stripes of Jesus, she is healed. Yes, Father. Yes. Lord, don't let any sickness take her out before she's did everything you've called her to do. Amen. She yes. spoke every word you've designed her to speak. Yes. Yes. Lord, we lift Nancy Pelosi. Yes. Up to you today. Amen. Yes. yes. The fire that's in her can be used for yes. greatness. Yes. The stubbornness in both of them. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. How they need to see who their real enemy is. Yes. Absolutely. 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 Tell the Bible, cut in for three minutes to the underbolt. Thank you, Lord. Lord, I pray for Roger Stone, Investigator Mueller. And everybody involved. Yes. We don't want to hide from darkness. <laughs> but God, it's took mercy for me to get where I am. Yes. Yes. Let your mercy flow through my nation again. Yes, Father. We've all seen. Yes. And we've all come short of the glory of God. Yes. But I do not say today that this is the beginning of the end for this nation. But I speak, declare, and say prophetically today yes. that you are about to see our nation be born again. Yes. Thank you, New beginnings yes. for our nation from a little place called New Beginning Church. Yes. Satan, I will not let my government fail. Yes. I will not let my nation fall. Lord, forgive us yes. for the blood on our hands for every child that's died. Thank you, Father. Every abortion, every murder, everything, Lord. Yes. Yes, Lord. I speak to the spirits of addiction. Oh, yes. Thank you, Father. Oh, yes. You do not reign in Kentucky. Amen. I'm announcing to you today that there's a people coming at you, Satan. Yes. Yes. 
Now we've been through the fire, we've been through the flood, and we was not burned, and we did not drown, and we are the worst thing that ever happened to you, devil. Yeah. We're going to set the addicts yeah. free. Yeah. We're going to yeah. give hope to the Praise hopeless, God. and America yeah. will be great again. Lord, create teams in our churches. We are. For every time your spirit moved was when the church was in one accord, in unity, in one place. Let us recognize the gifts in our brothers. Let us see that they can do what we can't do. They are called to what we're not called to do. We're on the same team. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And our little city in our county. Thank you, Jesus. You're worthy in this place. Thank you, Lord, they need wisdom to create income. Money, I speak to yes. you. Yes. You come to Knox County right now and yes. to the city yes. of Hammond. Yes. You want to be here, money. Yes. You want to be here, wealth. You can't help yourself but head in the direction of my city. Yes. I'm not going to live in a poor city, but we are going to have the abundance of God. We're going to pay our city workers. Yes. We're going to provide good lives yes. for them. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Words of wisdom to our leaders, to our judges, to our county officials. God ideals that create wealth. God ideals that, Lord, I'm asking you for seven flows of income to our city that they've never had before. Amen. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, my father. Thank you. Yes. We accept this assignment to pray. Yes. Lord, we don't have to preach to the nations. I figured out a long time ago I can get you to move in Tennessee from right here. Yeah. Praise the Lord. My promise to you as pastor is. That from this day, New Beginnings is going to pray for those in authority. We're going to lift, we're not going to bash them. Church, quit talking. Yes. Quit putting down politics. Yes, absolutely. From this day, if you talk and you gossip about your unfavored candidate, it'll be seen. Yeah. Yeah. They need Jesus just like preachers. Amen. 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 They need wisdom. Yes. Don't do it. Amen. If you feel like you have to take a strong political stance, don't partner my ministry. I don't want you money. Praise God. Blessing in the mighty name of Jesus. When God assigns you, when you start in ministry, He assigns you sometimes just to one person. Yes, He sure does. See what you'll do with it, how you'll treat it, how you'll honor it, how you'll grow. God don't, don't, God don't give you a nation when you start out in this. Yeah. But today, our little church. Thank you, Lord. See, I've been assigned to one person. You all heard him preach in revival. Daniel Ray Reynolds was my first assignment. Did pretty good on that. He knows the Bible better than I do. Then I was assigned to family. Then God started assigning me to cities. Then a state. But today, it's our job to speak faith filled words. Over our leaders. Yes. Yes. 
Absolutely. And if, if you're prejudiced and don't like Barack because of his skin color, get off my video. Amen. Mm -hmm. That's right. Go watch somebody else's. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Quit talking about his wife and children. Come on, church. This, this yeah, is right, right. Yeah. You, our, our nation is in division because our churches are in division because we think that these politicians can fix us. They can't. It's not the government's job to feed the hungry and clothe the poor and protect this nation. It's not the military's job to protect the nation of America. It's the church that's got away from getting on our knees. All them old Bible characters, they changed cities by walking with God. Oh, yes, they did. That's the truth. Thank you, Lord. God loves America. He loves New York City. Yes, He does. Yes. Thank you, Lord, for that word, Jesus. Yes. Just, just like a mother out there, Jesus said, I would that I could gather together Israel in like a mother hen. And what he meant by that is I want to put that little chick under my wings to where there ain't no foxes can see it. There ain't no weasels can know that they that baby's even in the nest. All they see when they look at that nest is mama. That's our job, church. Yeah. Yeah. Protection. That's good. Thank you, Lord. We flapped our tongues for too long. That's the truth. That's good. Right. Well, and complain. And Amen. I said it the other night that every pope is not the Antichrist. No. Try. Yeah. Go to your used Christian bookstores and look at how many books yeah. that have said the Pope's and the Catholic Church is the Antichrist. Yeah. Every Russian leader is not the Antichrist. They may have be operating in an yeah. Antichrist like spirit, but for years we preached at Gorbachev's yeah. birthmark. This is how stupid we are, church. Yeah. We preached his birthmark was the mark of the beast. Yeah. Every one of you heard it. Yeah. 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 They need Jesus. They sure yeah. do. Yeah. Just like us. Yeah. Absolutely. Humble Just boys. like a mama. Humble yeah. boys in your spirit, Jesus. It's got a son out there today that he can't stop doing drugs. He quits a day or two and then turns around and steals it. You can't, you can't leave a video game out because of it. Right. He'll take it and pawn it. Yeah. Everybody in the families forsook that drug addict. Don't want them around, but not mama. Right. Everybody talks about her. Oh, you letting that little boy, he's using you. No, she's trying to gather him in like that mama hen. That's how we're going to have to do. That's our new assignment. Praise God. At New Beginning Church. Yeah. Boldly, shut up. Don't you talk about Hillary. Don't you talk about Barack. Don't you talk about Nancy Pelosi. Don't you talk about the other side. Don't you talk about Roger Stone. Don't you talk about Trump. Pray. Yes. yes. Amen. They're all a mess. Yeah. Sure yeah. We're a mess. Yeah. How much time have you spent seeking God over your city? Yes. yes. Good question. Oh, I'm going to preach. Good. But I'd rather let the Holy Ghost fall yeah, yeah. 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 He's the best friend of ever. Yes, absolutely. He stood with me. Yeah. And there wasn't nobody else. Right. He will always be I thought I couldn't handle Daddy dying as, as death came. Yeah. He walked right up beside that bed yeah. and he stood with me. Yeah, thank you, Lord. Wow. 
Went through divorce in the Pentecostal church. Ruined my name. First day I come home. Holy Ghost was there. Praise God. He went to the Lord. Oh. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. We live in a generation that don't understand authority. That's the truth. We're rebellious. <coughs> we got little boys cussing out their mommies. You know what that happened when you grow up or even at my young age, you let a little boy cuss his mommy. Yeah. A stranger's man standing on the side of the road would have walked over and slapped his jaws out uh, that wouldn't kin to him, that right. didn't know him, uh, that didn't have no no, <coughs> no duck in the pond. But he, if he saw a little bitty boy cussing out a grown woman, yeah. he'd break his jaws. Yeah, he couldn't eat them. You know how we treat it now? We laugh at it. Oh, what's funny? You must be able to say them bad words. But the world does, though. A police officer now is an enemy. We fight them. Come on, I've seen it. I've, I've been in that world of Walmart. I saw a man in that store. Stole this. He had a pack of batteries. The police comes. Probably not even going to take him to jail. The officer is writing on a notepad. I'm glad I wasn't in there that day when I saw the footage and dealt with the aftermath, but the officer's writing on a notepad and the guy leans over the officer and gets a pair of scissors, puts them in his chest and then taps them oh all the way to the handle. Died a few days later. Over a five dollar pair of that. <coughs> You don't know, want to know why that stuff happens? We ain't welcome with God. That's the truth. That's right. We ain't praying. Yeah. When a little boy can cuss <coughs> out his mommy. See, it's authority. Mm -hmm. We've got a generation of kids that uh, have not been raised by a man. Because men are few and far between. You got that right. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. That's true. Maybe 20 seconds last time we were. <laughs> Bunch of weak <laughs> sissies. Yeah. Grown men that for 10 years has played video games. Yeah, mm -hmm. and they've the kids doing more it. I'm going to talk about kids. Yeah. I'm good. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. I, I'll even say this. Grown men that's never carried a pocket knife. Yeah. Never shot a gun. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Maybe Come on. Your Don't you see this? Yes. That may be funny, but what, what, it's the truth. It's the truth. I, I used to watch them old men well. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, that was a lure in that big pile of cedar laying there under their feet. Yeah. <laughs> Telling tales, and I don't want to be a knife. Yeah. And you're going to get cut when you get a knife. <laughs> but we're so big as sissies now, we want little little boy to have a knife because we're afraid he's going to get cut. He's going to get cut. <laughs> Last time you looked at the obituary, and so and so's young boy died because he cut his thumb on his pocket knife, and they just couldn't revive him. Right. 
don't understand authority because they, they've had mamas playing four or five roles. Yeah. Yeah. She's trying to be the dad. Yeah. She's trying to be the mom. Mm -hmm. She's trying to be their best friend. Yeah. She's trying to be their provider. She's trying to be their corrector. Yeah. And those roles ain't signed to her. So that ain't no wonder we talk about kings. If you cuss out your mom and you you gonna talk about everybody else. Oh, yeah. Whoa. I don't even know if mom is aware of this, but one time me and her was a fussing. Well, I was fussing. She was probably trying to tell me something I needed to do that I didn't want to do. <coughs> My dad had took off to work. He stepped up behind me and she was leaving me. Well, I draw back my hand like I'm going to hit her. I wasn't going to. I just wanted to look right at her <laughs> behind her back where she had to see me. My dad never whipped me much. I caught a building on fire and he, he whipped me. <laughs> he didn't. He didn't whip me much. But that day I'm standing at the edge of the garage with my hand dropped back like I'm going to hit my mommy. <laughs> I, he had made me a little punching bag out there in the garage. Hand me. Make you rough too. Probably one of the reasons I was pretty good at hitting people was that punching bag and tear your hand off pieces every time you hit it. I don't have no gloves. Yeah. And I drew my hand back on her about 15 minutes later. I woke up and I turned the girl. Dad's gentle. <laughs> but he used that old thing on me that she was here before you got here. <laughs> she gonna be here when you go. <laughs> he said, I don't know if she was gonna hit her or not. But he said, I would advise you not to have that thought again. Got me up. Took me to the creek. Mm -hmm. Give me his Mitchell 303 reel. I wasn't ever allowed to touch that reel. <laughs> <laughs> and me and him sat and caught winners in the creek with that little Mitchell root. Why are you telling that? That was authority. Mm -hmm. I told you now, don't, don't, don't take from that. That didn't whip me. I remember twice getting whipped by that. You want to know why he did it? Not because he's weak. He didn't have to. I'm doing something stupid. He just look across the room and I go my seat and sit down. <laughs> you know what happened? It's time to figure out what daddy wants me to do. And I don't know what he wants me to do. And I don't want to displease him. So I'm going to sit there. Was I afraid of him? Heck no. Not even close. I never had one thought that he would hurt me. But I understood authority. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. We don't do that now. It, it amazes me. You you take a little nineteen year old kid in jogging pants and a t shirt and flip flops in Walmart, mm -hmm. and he will think you have three trained police yeah. officers. Yeah. Full right gear. They've got on bulletproof vests. They've got blocks. They've got sticks. Ain't nowhere on them you can hit them and hurt them. And that little 19 year old punk will think he got an opportunity to whoop these three cops. That's the truth. No respect for authority at all. Look at your neighbor and say, Leave it at home. Leave it at home. I never imagined this would lead up to my message like it has, but look at your other neighbor and tell them. <laughs> <laughs>
Leave it at home. Leave it at home. <laughs> Turn to Matthew, the eighth chapter. This is another story I preach from a lot. But I don't think I've ever preached the same thing twice. Matthew 8, verse 5. And when Jesus was entered into Capernaum, there came unto him a centurion beseeching him. Everybody say military man. Military. He was a Roman military leader. You go back and look through history when Rome ruled the world, they ruled the world. Yes. This man is one of them in a leadership role. He's military minded. In fact, to get to the position he had, all he's ever been trained for his whole life is that Roman military. They didn't just pull somebody off the street and put them in that role. They saw strength in them as a baby, and they sent them in that role as a child and trained them their whole life in the military ways. Oh, yeah. The centurion, there came unto him a centurion beseeching him. Now when we look at this story, we look at it uh, like this big, powerful Roman centurion approaches uh, little Jesus. Now come on, that's how we picture it. I don't know if you like westerns or not, but I do. But one thing that makes me madder than snot. <laughs> I don't know how mad snot is. That sounds good when a redneck says it. It's the preachers in them westerns. They're always the bumbling, stumbling idiot of the city. The weak, weakest fella can't shoot, can't talk, can't... Worse yeah. notice on Andy Griffin locking himself up in jail. Every preacher you ever see in a western is just the most beautiful person. Our most common image of Jesus looks like he should have been hanging out on in California. Or at Woodstock. Mm -hmm. He's a hippie. Yeah. With a robe on and Birkenstock sandals. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Looks gay. <laughs> Sissy. Carrying sheep. Mm -hmm. yeah. Come on, that's our image. Yeah. Yeah. We have these pictures of him on the cross. And they're not even close to what he looked like on that cross. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you what he looked like. Go to your local meat department that still cuts meat and watch them grind beef or sausage. That's what his body looked like. It was ripped to shreds. Yeah. Yeah. When, when he couldn't lift that cross, there was pieces of his back hanging behind him on the ground. Yeah. You could see his internal organs through the wounds. He was a man. Yes. Look at that little sissy kid he carrying sheep. A full grown man let them press that crown of thorns in his teeth. You want to know how I, I say it was a full grown man? That's what men do. They suffer for somebody else.
See, it, 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 it was my weakness that caused him to allow mere men. Jesus had an angelic presence around him that could have stopped the whole nation of Rome right. in one breath. Oh, yeah. That's right. Yes, he was anointed. Amen. Why are you saying that? This was not a, a strong, and he was, trained from birth for this role as a centurion. When he didn't go through boot camp like we do today. They made sure you was qualified for these roles. This was not a weak man approaching Jesus, but this was not a weak Jesus that he was approaching. Right, try. This is a ga gathering of two military minded men. You had a Roman centurion that day approaching a king. Wasn't no little private, wasn't no little corporal, wasn't no general. This Roman man was approaching the king of kings and he knew it. Yeah. And he's beseeching that king, saying, Lord, my servant lieth at home. My title today is Leave It at Home. Yeah, yep. My servant lieth at home, sick of the palsy, grievously tormented. A strong military man beseeching a king about somebody that serves him. Strong men are compassionate. Strong men care about those that are weaker than them. That don't have the status they do. That don't have the authority they do. It wasn't a paid employee this was just a servant. <coughs> Lord, my servant is at the house. He's grievously tormented. I want you to get that point, though. When he approached Jesus, he left his problems at home. Yeah. It's a real issue. Yeah. He's a Roman centurion. You don't think he could have told eight of his soldiers to get my servant and pack him to Jesus? Yeah. Never thought of that, had you? I mean, his life is left, right, and left, and your left. His life is. He could have told them, go, go get my servant. Yeah. yeah. When men do things, and this is, this is really sissy and feminine of this generation, it means you're going to. Got a problem. We're gonna go in there and talk about it. Which we never have, because we ain't had no problem. We're not gonna do it in the crowd. Men don't do that. These are men. How, what, what does that have to do? He, th this guy could have had them pack his servant there, but he he going to do it himself. Right. And one of the things that I struggle with in the faith message is people coming to us and we want to blame whether they get it or not 
on Thursday. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. 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 It's easy to say they didn't get out of that wheelchair because their faith was weak. Blame it on. That shows you just a little boy. See, that, that centurion ain't sick. He's not tormented. He's not grieved. But he feels like that if I can go talk to Jesus. Now, you know I'm big on faith. I'm big on it. Faith works. Yes, it does. Hebrews 11 and 6 says, but without faith, it's impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Look at this story. We got a man coming to God. Yeah. That believes yeah. mm -hmm. he is. That's right. Mm -hmm. And he's diligently seeking him. He's not supposed to be coming to a Jewish prophet, right. rabbi, preacher. Yeah. Amen. Right. Right. That's diligence. Yes. Mm -hmm. Just his own life. Sure. Yeah. One of the best lessons I ever learned in management was the day the Holy Spirit whispered to me that leaders break rules. Yeah. They'll hold you accountable yeah. for it. Now, every one of you, if you've had any kind of daddy, yeah. you've had your daddy tell you to do something, not to do something, and then you see him do it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Come on. Well, let me get even more real. You've had your preachers <laughs> tell you not to do something that they're going and doing after church. <laughs> Are you saying that's okay? No. No, but leaders break the rules to get results. Walmart would tell me I could only give somebody 20 hours. I wrote their schedule out with 20 hours on it. And then I told them, if you want to work 40, come in two hours early every day and stay two hours late every day. And they would say, well, my schedule says 20 hours. I said, do you want to work? I was always in trouble over there. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't always. I, I, I had other managers going around saying, Todd gives his people 40 hours. We only give an hour's 20. They come to me and say, Did you? Yeah. Made $136,000 profit in their area last week. Paid them two hundred and seventy more dollars to work to make that one hundred and thirty thousand. Yeah. And everybody shut up. <laughs> yeah. That's was I breaking the rules? Yes. The rule was I'm gonna give them twenty hours. Leaders walk on an edge. There was two sets of rules going on that day. That Roman was not supposed to show any submission to a Jew. And Jesus, according to the Old Covenant, was not supposed to fellowship and hang out or be around these nasty, dirty Romans. Men that win wars, they break rules. I got buddies that fit in Desert Storm and one of the rules of, I don't know, but let's say Geneva Convention or the UN, one of the rules is, is they couldn't use a shotgun. Does too much damage. 
I saw pictures of their Humvees with ten saw all shotguns laying in the Humvees. And I noticed that some of them was Benelli's. $5,000 shotguns that Benelli shipped to them soldiers. They didn't ship it to the army, but they would get a soldier's address. They were breaking the rules. This man sees a need in somebody under him and, and he doesn't blame it on their faith. That's good. Yeah. That's good. That's good. He always, always saying, I'm getting on your toes. I just stood on my hand. It was a 4,000 4, pound elephant just stood on my toes. <laughs> it's excuses. That's right. If I blame it on your faith, I automatically free myself from the responsibility That's right. of having power or having faith. Amen. Now there's a balance. Jesus is the role model. There were times he absolutely Mention people's faith. That's back about if he had a convert, if he wasn't preaching or teaching you, he was talking to you about the size of your faith. Mm -hmm. Be it unto you according to your faith. Go your way. Amen. But this day, a military man and a king. Lord, my servant lies at home. He, he left his problems at the house. As a pastor, I want to teach you that principle when you come to this church and this service. Don't carry your junk in here. Leave it at the house. Amen. That's good. That's good. And then when the presence of Jesus comes in, He'll take care of it all. talk to Him about it. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Amen. Amen. See, that's what happened. Jesus came to the city of Capernaum that day. Well, when the power of presence of God shows up, that's the time to talk about what you left at the house. Yeah, yeah. That's good. The way we do it is we tell five or six of our brothers about what's going on at the house. Hoping they'll all help us pack it to Jesus. You don't want to know why you do that? You are not confident enough in your relationship with God. You're not confident enough in your power, your anointing, and your faith. And you feel like that if I gather up enough of my brothers, one of them might be able to get something done. <laughs> my servants at home grievously tormented in verse 7 and Jesus said unto him I will come and heal him a powerful point to that is Jesus did not tell anybody no find me that in scripture Finally, the leper that come to Jesus and said, could you clean me? And he said, nah. Finally, the blind eyes that come to him and, and he said, no. See, the, the disciples was of that mindset for a little while. They said to him, Lord, who sinned? This man or his parents uh, that he should be in. And that's the mindset of the church today. This came on you because you ain't living right. Uh, this came on you because you ain't tithing right. Uh, this came on you because you ain't giving right. Uh, you ain't talking right. Come on. Do you realize Jesus could have said, you are an uncircumcised Roman. You ain't of the seed of Abraham. You are not of the lineage of David. 
That's what we do. Lord, how could God heal them? They live the worst life. I look at me and say, oh, yeah. You all trash. I'm trash. But Jesus didn't treat anybody that way. Why are we? <laughs> we can't say y'all come healing. We don't understand the authority. Yeah. These two did. Jesus is a simple answer. You've got a servant in trouble. Well, let's go to your house. I'll heal him. My shoe just come untied. It's going to activate me. <laughs> I want to get strained down my boot. <laughs> I'll come. I want you to notice the willingness of God to do what this man had just asked. Jesus said, I will come and heal him. He's beseeched God and God's answered him. We're we going to come. We're going to take care of this. And the centurion said unto the Lord, I'm not worthy that you should come under my roof, but speak the word only, for my servant shall be healed. How many of us understands military terms, authority, rank, power, enough. Now this amazes me. That God, you get God willing to come to your house where you left your troubles at. Most of us, we want to have a, a Pentecostal fit right there. Jesus is going to go home with me. But men of great authority figure out to, that I, I'm not talking to a preacher today. I'm talking to a king. He don't need to even be seen at my house. He don't have time to come. He don't have to come to my house. How many of you could have God in the middle of answering a prayer that you figure out a better way. <laughs> Woo! Joey Hyatt helicopter Harlem Kilburn dance. <laughs> Jesus didn't make the decisions there. You want to know why this nation's a mess? Yeah. God ain't in control for us. No. That's right. That's right. We preach he is, but if he's in control, we gotta, we've got to apologize to the lady that got wrecked in Chicago last night. That's right. How can you persecute the rapist if God's in control? That man, he couldn't change it. He didn't have anything to do with it. God's in control of everything. Everything's a great big mess if he's controlling it. Uh -huh. He's a bad God. No, he, he works where his church invites him in. They're not even the church, men. If a human being invites him, Jesus was excited. I'm gonna, I, yeah, I'll go to your house and heal him. And the man thought of a better idea than God. You need to do that like a cow. A cow's got seven stomachs. They'll eat the water grass in one stomach, burp it back up, swallow it into another stomach, burp it back up. <laughs> Man, have a better idea than God. No, right. When he knows 
knows who God is. Mm. Good. Yeah. Good. Yeah. When he knows who God is and that God is a rewarder yeah. of them that diligently seek him. Yeah. You want to know why I preach faith so strong? You can't please him without it. Without faith, it's impossible to please God, but we must believe that He is and that He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. That's right. That man had just fulfilled all of that. He beseeched Him. He believed He is. My problems are at home, Lord, but you don't have to walk all the way there. That's right. Speak the word only. That's the word of faith we preach. See, this man wasn't even focused uh, that he speak the word. Lord, if you say it, I don't need anything else. If you speak it, old men used to understand that God is not a man that he can lie. That's right. That's right. If he says it, he will do it. If he spoke it, he will bring it to pass. That's why. I loudly proclaim with his stripes I'm healed. I have the power to get wealth to establish his covenant. Money looks for me. My mom can tell you it looks for us. It comes to us strange ways. We get rid of all of it and it comes and it comes it comes. Are you greedy? Tell it. No, I ain't. But he said, not me. He said he wished above all things that I prosper and that I be in health, even as my soul prospers. That man wasn't a video. He didn't even care about his own. What if we got to the place that we just said, This is what you said, Lord? That's all I need. You said it. We think in the faith camp that uh, first off, we got to have 25 verses about it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We're going to at least take 20. 25, probably get it done. And we're going to have Sayoma and 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 Sayoma. I'm qualified to preach this to you. I've took the little phrase all is well. That's right. And did a lot with it. Yep, yep, yes. I need verses. Most of the time you're doing that, you're doing that in fear. You're afraid you ain't going to get the money to pay the bill and they're going to take something and, and you rapid fire that word. This man said, Lord, if you say it, that's enough. Yeah. I came today to tell you if he said it, that's all I need. Amen. 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 I'm leaving my problems at the house. I'm not even I'm not packing them to him. I'm only interested in what he, what words come out of his mouth. Yeah. 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 That's good. Yeah. Amen. Speak the word. Only. Yeah. Yes. What's he saying there? He's saying, Jesus, I know. I've heard about your ministry. Yeah. If you've studied this Roman centurion built the temple in Capernaum for them. He respected that. He knew that, that Jesus says, times uh, you spit on mud and rub it between your fingers and put it on blind men's eyes uh, and they see again. There's times uh, that you lay your hands on people and they get healed. I know you do all that. See, we, we're trying to put God in a box.
Yeah, your mom may have got healed that way. She may have went 29 nights in a row on her knees at the altar. But men that come to God and know that He is. Yeah. That's the two things, that's the yeah. only two things you gotta know. Yeah. He is and He rewards. Yes. He is, He rewards. Yeah. He is, He rewards. Yeah. Man. Speak the word only. That's good. My servant shall be healed. Then he explains it to him. I'm a man under authority. What does that mean? He's got people over him. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I have in soldiers under me. I say. To this man go, and he goes. I say to this man, I say to this man, I say. I don't fill out a decree and have it stamped twice yeah. and, and sent through two offices to, to tell that man to go. I step out and tell him go, and he goes. To another and come and he comes. Yes. We don't understand that. He's telling Jesus, uh, I understand authority in a way that I can step out uh, and tell this man to go and he goes uh, and this one to come and right at the same moment, at the same time, he's a going and he's a coming. Yeah. He cometh and to my servant, do this, and he doeth it. These people understood the operation of authority. Mm -hmm. They were military minded men. You had a military soldier and a king. We need to get back to thinking military minded. Yeah. Ain't no private gets by this morning. No. When his leadership tells him to run four miles and nah, I'm going to sleep in at 11 30 today. I ain't used to getting up this early. <laughs> come, come get me at lunch. I don't even want breakfast. No. You run it. That's right. <laughs> you run it. Yes, you are. <laughs> if you know your place in Christ, <laughs> thank you, Jesus. You should know. That when you speak, everything gets busy. Yeah. This yeah. stuff goes when you tell it to go. This stuff comes. Yeah. When you that. That's good. How do you do that? Devil! Mm -hmm. Get out of my house! Yep. Money! Yeah. My address is 175 North Penn Creek Road, Malley, Kentucky. How you show up there in piles? do with it and they do it and when Jesus heard it he marveled mm -hmm. and said unto them that followed verily I say unto you I have not found so great a faith in all of Israel I say unto you that many shall come from the east and the west and sit down with Abraham Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven but the children of the kingdom shall be cast out into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. What's that say? When you don't understand authority, your children go to hell. That's what that's saying. We always like that weeping and gnashing of teeth part, but look who it says. Verse 12, the children of the kingdom. About Jesus people. It's, it's, you've got the children of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. Their kids going to hell because we don't understand authority. No, that didn't. But the children of the king, not the devil's kids. Shall be cast into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. 
Jesus said unto the centurion, Go thy way, thou hast believed, so be it done unto thee. And his servant was healed in that self same hour. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Oh, yes. Speak the word. Yes, amen. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus said, I ain't found so great a faith. What is an example of great faith? It's a man that pleases God, that knows he is God, and that knows he's a rewarder if I diligently seek him and all I need on my, I don't need you gathering up a group for me. I don't need a thousand of you praying. All I need is did it come out of his mouth? If he said it, that's all I need. Leave your problems at the house. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Leave your problems at home. Thank Jesus. Go to Jesus. Yeah. Tell him your problem. But then listen to what he says. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, you want to know how to measure great faith? Speak the word mm -hmm. only. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's good. But I, I give you something even deeper. You never find faith as great from anybody using it for their own needs. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Or somebody has been first by you. That's a it, faith is called great twice. Mm -hmm. And there's one level above great faith. Most holy faith. Mm -hmm. Build yourself up praying in the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Building on your mm -hmm. most holy faith. Yeah. Well, how is that most holy? Because mm -hmm. you saying words that you don't understand mm -hmm. and believing <laughs> that those words you utter are going to come to pass yes. in somebody else's life. That's most holy faith. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Sticking in the Holy Ghost. Great faith. The two times it's mentioned is somebody making a demand of faith for somebody else. Not having no excuses. Yeah. Her faith was weak. She didn't get healed. No. What's wrong with your faith? Amen. Right. That's good. Mm -hmm. That's good. She didn't get healed, and you've done the speaking, you've done the talking in tongues, you've done the laying on of hands, you did the anointing with oil. What is wrong with your faith? Amen. 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 I come to you. Amen. Yep. Look at your neighbor and say, leave it at the house. Leave it at the house. Look at your other neighbor and tell them, leave it at the house. Leave it at the house. <laughs> Father, I thank you for this service. Thank you for this offering. Thank you for everybody that gives into our life and ministry. For all my partners. For every dollar sown, Lord, you said that if you gave prophets a cup of water, they would reap the prophetic reward. You said that if they give, men would give unto them good measure. Press down, shaking together, and running over. Men give into their bosoms. Money! You come into every person that sows into my family's life. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. amen. amen.